you're in the right place. Welcome to Cigar Time. <laughs> I'm not. These guys are. <laughs> that one was good. I like that one. What? You're in the right place. I get rated on my opening. Yes, that was good. I felt like pretty Milton good. Pearl. Of well, if, you don't remember Milton Bro. If that's, that's going to be your that's primary enough. contribution to the that's show, about it. Yeah, I'll see you all. Right. Yeah, right. I'm exactly. out of here. Larry, Mo, and Curly down the Yeah, they're, guess who Curly is. Them together. <laughs> <laughs> hmm? well, it's, not, it's Manny, Mo, and Jack. Hey, how about that weather? <laughs> what? Not what bad weather? for the beginning of December. No. Oh. Uh, Pray. We don't, yeah, we don't know. <laughs> We're talking about. We're, we're locked. Inside. We're locked up back here. We're we don't inside. know what the weather's like. Know. You know, I I would hope that some of you people at home watching would have a little bit of sympathy, <laughs> and, and 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 just realize that we have to spend our days. I have to spend my days surrounded by. I don't want to mention names. I'm not here. But all we basically do all day is no. smoke, eat. And get harassed. Really drink. <laughs> is that about it? Pretty much. And watch get sports. Harassed. Watch, yeah, yeah, watch get listen to sports. If you think this harassed. is an easy job, it's not. No. Absolutely guarantee you, it's not. It's the best job in the world. Having said all that, yes. I wouldn't trade it for a zillion dollars. Is there a, is there I a, would. A, I would. Yeah. 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 Hey, 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 wait. A zillion or a million dollars? No, there's not a trillion. A trillion, yes. Although for a That's what the government's spending about every year. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Well, we're honored and pleased to have Omar Fratello back, and we're going to get yeah, more yeah. into his, his story, and, and we're going to smoke another one of Welcome the wonderful back. Fratello thank you. cigars. Thank you. Welcome back. Uh, thank you, guys. Yes, thank Matter of fact, uh, Tia is going to tell us all about Tia our... Tia doesn't uh, know anything else. I do, too, so here we go. All right. So this wow. is the Fratello cigar by Omar DeFrias. The wrapper is a Nicaraguan Habano. The binder... Oh, my God. Uh, I forgot the binder, but that's okay. And the filler is <laughs> Peruvian and Nicaraguan. What that's is right. the binder? Okay. Okay. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. The binder is the I least forgot. important. Rob uh, messed okay. me up. He I, yeah, yeah I messed you up. That's right. You, you can't get away school. with a cheap binder and a good in. cigar. It comes yeah. in four sizes, right? Four sizes, four sizes and a new release. The Corona, the Robusto, the Toro, and the Tamacle, or the Gordo, which is my favorite size. Not to smoke. Remember that. Um, and the uh, flavor profile. So what do you do with it? The flavor profile <laughs> yeah, really. is um, spice, some earth. I think you have cocoa in there. Yeah. I said cocoa, right? And um, <laughs> <laughs> I think that. I, that's a huge problem. How do you spell that? That's pretty <laughs> solid. I think that's pretty solid. I think How you do got you it. That? How many years have you been doing this? <laughs> Finally said cocoa, right? Okay. There you go. All right. All right. See, you got it. I think you got it pretty solid. It. It. And a nice part of it, it's not a Honduran. It's not a Honduran. <laughs> Thank God. Or a Nicaraguan either. There are no Honduran. That's right. They like to make fun Just to remind everyone, we're cutting and lighting oh, yes, our cigars yes, yes, with yes, the yes. official cutter and lighter of Thank you very much. Cigar Time Zycar. This is the Alum lighter. Great, great cutter and lighter. <laughs> so the, the Alum lighter uh, retails for $50. Really? It's a good gift for uh, Christmas, which is coming up in a few weeks. Yeah. I've got a slightly used oh. one you can have for $39.95. We're doing <laughs> Pollyanna this year, so that's going to be pretty cool. Well, what gonna, are we doing to her? We're doing Pollyanna, all of us doing What Pollyanna. are we doing to her? <laughs> oh, God. It's another day of work, huh? Yeah. yeah, see the harassment. There you go, there we go. <laughs> yeah, we're doing Pollyanna. I heard her. Right. Yeah, and then we should put on the website what everybody gave each other. That's right, so yes. cute. Or a picture. Who invited her? Yeah. What do you mean? I give everybody the womanly touch here. Oh, wait, never mind. Yeah. Hey, I'm ready for some. Myself. Be careful. Yeah. Where do I sign up for? <laughs> you did. That was pretty. Where do I sign up for? We're going to line up on that one. <laughs> I can't help it. <sighs> the womanly touch. The womanly touch. touch. That's right. That's funny. Boy, so, that was a conversation stopper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Not sure where to go. So a lot of thought process going on around here. <laughs> yeah. uh, the machineries are working. Yeah, what can I say? What can I say? What can I say? What can I say? <laughs> well, I think we should get right into it because I know uh, Paul's down there chomping at the bit to uh, do his bit. But before we do that, I'd like to get into a little bit more about Omar. Uh, first, you can tell us about the cigar. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys, first of all, to, uh, for having me again. Yes. 
Uh, I love coming around here, man. It was uh, last week. It was uh, it was an easy drive. Now it's just uh, another easy drive, you know. But <laughs> it's uh, sometimes you hit that traffic, it can get a little bit bad, you know. Yeah, and we're sure thankful you like leftover week. pizza. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I do appreciate leftover pizza from the week before. Um, <laughs> so a lot it was traffic today. <laughs> it was pretty dry. It was. It was you never, bad. You never heard of well-aged pizza? <laughs> no, no. Well-aged cigars I had. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, we see what you. This is what you'll appreciate oh, about the uh, the Fratello Corona. Um, this is our original release. Um, you guys brought it in last year, um, and it's been doing, it's certainly been doing amazing uh, as a cigar. It's, 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 it's got an entirely different uh, uh, profile from the entire line. Last week we featured the Boxer, uh, which is the Box Press Torpedo 6 and a quarter by 52. This is a 5.5 by 46 ring gauge. It's a, nice size. Order. It's it's a nice beautiful size. size. Yeah. Um, and, it, uh, and it came out absolutely gorgeous. It's got a, it's, 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 if there's a word or a hashtag that I would be able to associate with our cigar, Obviously, you got to do the hashtag. Would be tasty. It's very tasty. tasty. Yeah. So um, I'll let you guys, you know, enjoy it and get a little bit into it a little bit more, so you guys can see exactly what we're looking for into the cigar. Um, but hope you guys get a chance well, to enjoy it. I remember this one from last year from yeah. the Big Ash Bash, and this was the free sample one you were handing out. You were only actually handing out this size, and I swear, every mm. person you gave it to or I talked to about it, within two minutes. We're buying a box yeah. of your cigars. We right. sold so many boxes that night. 12, 15 yes, boxes, we yeah. did. Yes, we did. So, you know, an original is always best. So That's there right. you go. How do you remember that? I remember every I can't remember what I had for breakfast. breakfast. She has a mind like a steel press. It's Omar. Rusty. That's right. Now. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Amen. Huh? Yeah. No, we truly did a great job with this uh, with this particular size. And obviously, I'm you know, I'm a smaller ringish guy as well. Uh, we wanted to. You know, in terms of, of in terms of ring gauges, when you talk about you know 46, 52, 54, it truly is about what you enjoy. <laughs> I enjoy a lot a 46 ring gauge cigar. So, uh, 44, a nice long stale, uh, and so. Yeah, when you yeah. blend a cigar, do you blend it to this size, or do you yes. blend it a different size? This we blend size? it to this particular size. Why? Okay. Uh, and we let the tobacco roll itself out. Um, a lot of people say, oh, we wanted to. You know, we, when we blended the particular cigar, we wanted to make sure that on the 52 or the 54, the cigar worked entirely the same, and it's impossible. It, it never does. It really never does, and so, um, and that's okay with us. We wanted to make sure that when we blended the Corona size, which is our, which is our, our, our you know, our original release, you get those <laughs> flavor profiles that you would get, you know, an enormous amount of flavor, and so this is what you get. I'm missing it. I'm missing it right no, here. No, he just started. He just he dropped. Of yes, here, right? I mean he's like so little right now. His chair. Like, <laughs> I, 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 are you shrinking, man? Like, what the heck? I think it's the sexual tension here. Yeah. Oh, it's so going down. Like I don't get it. Is she going? <laughs> oh, oh, there was any? I'm not. I'm not touching that know. with a twenty foot pole. <laughs> <to> start <laughs> If I could take a little break in the show for just a minute and get it back to a seriousness. <laughs> okay. Now, how in the world did you go from NASA to cigar? I know some of your background, right. but, but why don't you, I think the folks at home would be interested in knowing that. So, it's, it, I get asked this question a lot. Um, I and, can imagine. And it's, and, it's, and, it's, and it's one of those, a lot of people don't understand. It's like, man, you went from NASA to cigars. I mean, what's the connection? I'm uh, I'm originally from the Dominican Republic. I was born in. Uh, I, wouldn't, I thought you were from Boston. <laughs> <laughs> the whole accent, right? right you can yeah, tell. Yeah. There were some cigars, you know. You know? <laughs> that was great so, Boston cigar. <laughs> exactly, exactly. No, we uh, we so originally from the Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. Been a smoker, a uh, great part of my life, and it's been something that I've loved and that I've uh, enjoyed the camaraderie and the and the and the, and the, the atmosphere around tobacco and about and around cigars. Uh, so about three and a half years ago, I was sitting down. I've always been an entrepreneur. Always done a lot of things, you know, from you know the stock market to you know distribution of things in the Dominican Republic. You name it, we've done it, um, and it's done very well for us. But I wanted to focus on one thing. I wanted to focus on one thing and one thing only, so I could put my entire energy onto that. And so uh, I was smoking a cigar in the back of my deck and uh, hanging out with my wife. And I was looking at the cigar and I was puffing it. I was lighting it up, and it's like. Wouldn't this be something if I could pull this off? And she looked at me and said, well, if there's anybody that actually can pull that off, it's probably you. And so I did. Wow. I, Where did you get that wife? Yeah, <laughs> man. It was intense. It was, uh, it was something that I, 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 I knew the consumer part of the house because I've always been, I've been a consumer for a greater part of my life. 
but it was the it was the manufacturing, it was the distribution. Where did I fall into this entire spectrum? I mean, you can do from what you guys do from the retail side of the house to the distribution side of the house to the brand management to the actually being on the fields, which is something that we have uh, uh, considered, and we are you know this is something that we in the future potentially looking to to doing as well. So it was just brand management made a lot of sense for us. So owning a brand. Um, I started doing an enormous amount of research. I started literally putting a business plan together just to make sure that we were doing things right. From a business plan that was about hey high, it's about now this small of what everything that I put in, but I did my job. I did that, I did enough to be able to learn as much as I possibly could, and I still know very little, but I know enough to be able to, to talk about tobacco, to talk about cigars. I've been in Nicaragua, Honduras, uh, Dominican Republic, Santo Domingo, Santiago, uh, uh, Cuba, just to be able to understand a little bit more, and, uh, and 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 here we are. You know my sister-in-law from Santiago, yes? I do, mm -hmm. I do. Very, very knowledgeable, and uh, she's got her own factory, too. Uh, you have a little, fa we call it the family factory. That's right, that's right, that's right. So, NASA, your job at NASA must be kind of a time-consuming job. How do you find the time to do all this? It's, uh, it's like I, I was telling my wife, if, I, if I'm able to pull off uh, not dying the next year on the road, <laughs> well, we I think I would be successful. Yeah. Because it truly puts an enormous amount of, uh, it, it truly, it's, it's a very stressful job. Uh, both of them are. People see the, the aspect of the, the events and people see the aspect of you're hanging around and smoking cigars and hanging out with people but they don't see the enormity, the enormous amount of work that goes behind it. The fact that we have to be in Nicaragua every two months, uh, you know, when you're doing the distribution in the United States to be able to look at your tobacco, see how everything is evolving, well, you know, pick and choose your cigars and smoke them and say, yeah, this is smoking, continue to smoking well, come back to the U.S., visit your shops, you know, come to Cigar Time and hang out with you guys. That's, right. so yeah. it's, that's the hardest work of all. That's yeah. right, that's right. <laughs> so there's a lot to it, you know, and there's an enormous amount of the effort that we have to put in uh, to be able to, to, to do this. And so it's, uh, it's something that we don't stop, but you cannot do this without, you know, feeling in, you know, an enormous amount of passion right. and love. Of right. course, yeah, definitely. That's awesome. Really cool. Are we going to do initial impressions first or no? We no. can do initial impressions. Go ahead. Initial impressions, you like spice. You like that pepper flavor. Um, she's a man. <laughs> definitely getting a he lot of... He likes his cigars and he likes his women's spices. Definitely getting <laughs> That's right. a lot of spice. Like I said, this one is my favorite cigar. So, um, you know, I'll let you know more when I keep smoking. Paul? This is like night and day to me from the other. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, it's a different this design. is this is really excellent. First of all, it burns straight as a razor, and yeah. the ash is nice and solid. There's a lot of flavor in it. The spice is right up front, but there's some creaminess behind it. It almost, to me, has a slightly Cuban-esque kind of flavor yeah, to it. Um, it's a great compliment. I'm enjoying it a lot. He says that. That's, that's, that means a lot. Yeah, it's a huge compliment. It has always amazed me how much different. Uh, two cigar, the same cigar can be in different sizes. Yeah. This is this yeah. really is. I think it's much different. It's much different than the cigar we smoked last week, and I think it's right. different than the Toro which we've had in the past. Mm. That's right. Um, this one has a lot of flavor. I am getting spice, and Rob, you mentioned cocoa last week a little bit on this one. I'm, yeah. I'm definitely getting that with this oh, yeah. one. Yeah. I'm not getting that yet. Well, that's the I think it really profile. shows that you blended to the right. Corona. Mm -hmm. you, it, all of the blending work that went into the wine. Really shows in this. Right. Right. This, is exactly. bell ringer. this is definitely yeah. the bell ringer. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of earthy taste uh, right. to this cigar. Um, I get the sweetness and I get the spice, uh, big time, like Tia said. Mm -hmm. um, so far, it's 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 very good. I mean, I've had I've yeah, had a lot. Right. I've had a lot. I smoked the cigar on the golf course, so yes, I like the cigar. Trust good. me. So, I love the cigar. Good. I have to admit, I really love the cigar, and I would be saying it if Omar weren't sitting <laughs> to my left. Yeah, that way. <laughs> um, Omar, do me a favor. Tell people about the band. Yes. I, yeah. So the band is something that um, you know people tell me. It's like Omar, you put that much effort on the band, your band alone. I can just imagine the effort that you guys put on the cigar itself. And uh, people don't know the enormity of the of the effort that we put into angling our band around uh, our cigar. So this is the most probably for me the most unique band in the industry. Actually, angling around a cigar. Um, it actually, when you when when people are smoking it, they tend to turn it around because they don't understand what's going on. 
Um, so they turn around all the way throughout because they think it's Frat, oh, is it Ello, Frat Ello? And then they Frat look Ello. over here and it says Fratello Cigars. Uh, we put in uh, our, our designer from the Dominican Republic, uh, probably the, to me the best designer in the Dominican Republic. He, he, we, we wanted to capture a couple of things. We wanted to capture, I'm a big fan of the 1950s New York City, Radio oh, yeah. City Music yeah. Hall feel to it. I'm a big fan of those old school barber poles, 1920 uh, uh, barber shops type styles. And we wanted vibrancy on the cigar. We wanted to be something that would pop up. But the biggest message we wanted to highlight on the cigar was, if you would be smoking you know, a cigar, walking down the street, you would be able to tell that that's a Fratello. Mm -hmm. And so that's the part that a lot of people get, get confused in this industry is in terms of their branding and how they look at branding at a company. So we wanted to highlight uh, uh, something where you know, it would be easily recognizable, simple, but very eye-catching, and I think that's exactly what we well, I think almost, you accomplished that. It's yeah. almost Art Deco. Yes. Yeah, that's where it's at. 50s New yeah. York, yeah. It's really yeah. cool. Yeah. I am. Thank you. Yeah. No, it's really, uh, and, 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 and just putting the cigar ban on the cigar itself, from when the factory can put about, one person can put about 800 bands of a normal cigar, they can only put about 300 of these ones, and I'm going to tell you exactly why. When we look at the tobacco, when we look at the cigar itself, we look at the most beautiful and pristine part of the entire cigar so that we can put the band around it and so that when the consumer looks into the, into the cigar, they see the most pristine, there's no veins, there's nothing going on. Doesn't mean that there's no veins around the cigar, it just means that they will look at the most prestigious part. So that's very hard to do with this because this is the face of the cigar, but that's not how they put the band. They put the band this way because they need to attach it onto the back and then they need to each hand turn every single so the cigar so that they can put it inside the cello. And so instead of you just literally grabbing the cigar and chalking it to the most beautiful part, you have to hand turn every single cigar, chalk the part that is not the most beautiful, turn it again, and so you can have the band itself. So it's very, it's very time. I had to bring a lot of bizcocho and, uh, and, and, and ice cream at the factory so that they can uh, sustain it a little bit more. I love that, though. So, that's great. It's very unique. Yeah. A little brugal. That's right. That's right. Brugal, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I like about your entire brand and from watching you all, all year, all, you know, all last year and this year, um, you put a lot of love into yeah. it, you know, and it really shows. You think he has some passion brugal. about it? Yeah. yeah. And it's. It, but it shows through the product. Yeah. That's, I like that. Thank you. I love the wrapper on this. It's got a beautiful. Isn't it like gorgeous? It's dusty crystallized. Cinnamon color to mm -hmm. it. Yeah, really it's got a reddish, cinnamon. nice color to yeah. it. It's high priming yeah. Colorado. Yeah. Very gorgeous. High priming Colorado? Yes. Really nice. That's a beautiful Thank Colorado you. wrapper. Yeah. Yeah. I think we have to get the paw. Yeah, I'm, I'm coming well, around to him. <laughs> Don't worry about me. I, I, I was just hesitating a little because he's got a tool down there that I can't, <laughs> I can't quite figure out how that tool fits into the cigar business, but I'm sure Paul's about to tell us how yeah, it fits in. Yeah, he's about to pluck his crap. nose. <laughs> what? Ah, you put the back his of nose head. hair. Oh, my God. Now, okay, huh? we've been... Uh, <laughs> We've been exploring, uh, you may remember from last week, we began exploring things that make a good cigar good and a less good cigar less good. Wait a minute, can you say that? I'm confused. <laughs> a little, a little. Okay, things, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Forget it. Now I'm confused. Well, that's not hard to do. He's getting One of the that. things that makes a less good cigar less good okay. is what I like to call twigs. Other people call them stems. Some people call them sticks. Sorry, Rob. Uh, but they are a thing that occurs naturally in tobacco and doesn't belong in your cigar. Basically, a, a tobacco leaf has a, a piece of stem and it has veins. And depending on the breed of tobacco and which priming or which cut you have, the veins can be thick. Sometimes the veins can even be woody but the stem is a whole other thing. The stem is that, that main wooden piece that attaches to the stalk of the plant and runs right up the middle of the leaf. And in the process of destemming tobacco, if people rush, if people don't want to spend the money to do it right, some pieces of leaf with pieces of stem wind up in the cigar. I just want to show you how bad that can be, which is why I have this instrument of torture <coughs> here. We'll have a hammer next week. Well, torture to some, pleasure to others. 
Wow, look how long that is. Sometimes, this is actually not too, too bad. Sometimes you'll Much get a longer, stem yeah. like this that runs through the entire cigar. Wow. Uh, I was hoping to pick one like that, <laughs> but I couldn't really tell how far into the cigar it went until I pulled it out. Um, but what you don't want is wood. I mean, that's what this is. It's actually wood. And it really doesn't belong in your cigar. Now, in practical terms, how do you avoid that? Uh, the best way is to look at a cigar end on before you buy it. And if there is a stem, you should be able to see it. It's going to look like the end cut of a piece of wood. Just so nestled somewhere. Will be a little well, discolored also? Yeah, well, it's always going to be a slightly different color than mm -hmm. the rest of the leaf. That's if it's in the front, but if it's in the back, sometimes when you, after you the, cut a cigar in the back. The real problem comes when it runs through the whole cigar. Yeah because then the cigar is not going to burn right. No. Uh, if you pull it out, it's still not going to burn right, because oh, then it's oh, going to have a hollow yeah, right through the middle of it. Yeah. It's, just, it's just trouble. And sometimes you'll find cigars that have multiple stems in it, two or three. Like and phony Cubans. <laughs> a lot of phony Cubans yeah, have that. lots of stems in them. Um, so stems are a, a thing to avoid. Um, Unless you like a woody cigar. Like Rob. Well, <laughs> he's getting lots of. You generally, you're generally not. You know, my rule of thumb is, in a, in a well-known manufacturer of premium cigars, you're generally not going to find any stems. You shouldn't. No. But if you're interested in getting your money's worth and pursuing quality, you should always check. You should be looking at the foot of your cigar yes. anyway before you buy yeah, it because that's true. it tells you a lot about the cigar. It tells you about the the way that it was rolled. Um, if you develop an eye for it, it tells you how much Lajero is in the cigar. Mm -hmm. You can yep. usually see that that's a slightly different color. Um, it tells you if there are stems. Uh, you can tell if a draw master was used to make sure mm -hmm. that the cigar draws properly by looking at the end of the cigar. And you shouldn't be able to hold the cigar up to the light and be able to read the Santo Domingo Times either. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, that's really not encouraging at all. <laughs> um, but to your point, while good cigars from major manufacturers should not have this in it, without naming names, I will tell you that this is a cigar manufactured by a household name company. Wow. And it's a major brand. Wow. Amazing. It does happen, though. It I mean, does. it shouldn't, I mean, but I mean, it's, it's all made by... It's, it's, it's all a handmade product. Yeah, exactly. Almost anything can happen at least air. once or yeah, twice I've, to I've, any brand. Yeah. I've yeah. had a $20 cigar that has stem in it. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, so my point is, well, be an informed yeah. consumer yes. and take a look. Absolutely. Taking a look costs you nothing. Having your cigar be as perfect as it can be every time you buy it is always an advantage. Mm -hmm. Now, this, sure. this cigar being different than the cigar we smoked last week, the Boxer, yeah. I, I'm going to guess this is a little less expensive than the Boxer. Yes, this is about $7.20. All right, that's in the sweet uh, spot. Okay. So it's, yep. uh, it's, it, it has to do a lot with, obviously, sizes, and obviously, sure. we talked about that, sort of <coughs> the weight of the tobacco. You know, when you, you have something where, you know, you go from a 60 ring gauge to a 52 or a you know, 46, and obviously that plays a role, and so um, that's the way it, it works for right. us as well. Yeah. So. I think it's time to discuss the cigar amongst us and put a number on it. Before we do that, I okay. just want to say one thing. Omar, it's clear that your company is a yeah. true boutique cigar company. Yeah. yeah. And while they're available at our stores, I think it would be really good for you to support your local brick and mortar shops. Yeah. And if you're interested in this cigar and you're not near one of our stores, Ask your local tobacconist to pick these up. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, and we're hoping those of you who are viewing the uh, show in the greater Philadelphia metropolitan area uh, will go to your local brick and mortar, not only support them, but, you know, give the Fratello a try. I think if you try it, and especially since it is in the sweet spot of pricing, if you try it, I think you're going to like this cigar a yeah. lot. And Omar's a great guy. I mean, we meet everybody in the cigar business, and we've known most of them for all of them very long time in a lot of cases we were around before they were around and and, and we just find that uh, it's always a pleasure to do business with a gentleman mm -hmm. and, and a true lover of the leaf yeah absolutely so, thank you. And it's clear how much passion you put into yeah, it as well oh, yeah. a lot of passion a lot of companies are run by you know accountants and things like that and there's fewer and fewer as years go by there's fewer and fewer individual people that have the passion for cigars 
that a person like Omar has, and he truly does have it. Well, let's talk about it, because we're, again, running out of time. Yeah. I'll go first. You go first. Yeah, I'll go first. Um, again, I, I love this cigar. I loved it from the first time I had it. Um, I always try to put people onto this cigar um, when they come into the store. Um, the wrapper is gorgeous. Um, I'm getting a lot of the crystallization coming to the top. Um, I wasn't too keen on the band, but after you explained you not keen on this band. After you explained it uh -huh. and all that thought that went into it, I really appreciate the Thank band you. now. Um, the fact that it has Peruvian tobacco in it, I find that to be a rare treat, mm -hmm. and I really enjoy yeah. that. Um, and like Paul said, it does burn very evenly, beautiful ash, and just overall, just a really good cigar. Thank and, you. You know, thank you for making something this Paul? good. So. We didn't get a number. Not oh, yeah, yet. we didn't get a number. Not yet. Quickly. Not yet. All right, well, quickly, um, I'm definitely going 9.5. Changing on the show around. You're up there, 9.5. I like this cigar a whole lot. A whole lot more than the other one, just a whole lot all by itself. Mm -hmm. I think it's an excellent cigar. I've enjoyed everything about it. Uh, i got to give it a 9. Thank you. Scott? Um, I, I like this better than the one we had last week and better than the ones I've had. I think the flavors are very similar. They're just, with this one, they're just, Welcome they're back. just, there's, yep. just it's, there's more there. Um, and in this one, I am getting more of the cocoa. I'd, I'd give this an eight and a half. Rob? Nice. Um, last week I said I liked the boxer better than, than this one before, but now that I smoke this one again, mm -hmm. I, I like this one better. I think Make Paul's, up your mind. I, told I, you so. I think Paul's right. I, I'm getting a lot more taste out of this cigar than I did last time. I, I do smoke this on the golf course because it's, it's such, an, it's such a, a good cigar, yeah. smooth cigar. Um, I'm getting a lot of earthy taste. And um, it burns great. It does burn great. I'm not getting any uh, cocoa in this like really? I did last week. Yeah, not at all. Yeah. But I do get the spice and, and the earthiness, which I, I really like in a cigar. Um, I, I'd give it a, a solid nine. So. Nice. Yeah, I'm yeah. definitely getting the cocoa and a little bit of spice, and it's just overall great burning, great looking, beautiful Colorado wrapper, and, and it, to me, it's a solid 9.25. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I like this cigar. I like the boxer, too. Right. That reminded me of a more classic cigar. This is a very tasty, and in the mm -hmm. Corona, in the Corona presentation, mm -hmm. it's just, you know, a great format and a great taste. Yes. Uh, I like Omar. He's got some new product or, or a new product coming out in the spring. And yeah, we got a minute maybe, left. Yeah, <laughs> we're running out of time as always. And next year, hopefully, uh, we'll You'll be, be back. able to come around yeah, and yeah. say hello to you guys. But I really wanted to say uh, something real quick. Thank you guys for having oh. me. Uh, well, thank thank, you, thank, you, thank you guys for your amazing support. I mean, it's always been, it's always great when we can come out, say hello to you guys, hang around, smoke a cigar, and be in a great company, great gentlemen. Well, thank real you. Real quick, your IG, real quick, your IG is? Um, uh, Fratello Instagram. Cigars, and Instagram and Twitter is Fratello Cigars uh, with two L's. And my uh, uh, web page is www, nobody says that anymore, FratelloCigar.com. No else. Okay. Easy okay. to remember. Time to say goodbye. Real quick. Bye bye for now. Sorry. Please. Smoke often and smoke happy. Hmm. And Life's smoke too short to smoke cheap cigars and hold on. <laughs> Ciao for now, everybody. They get on me for the same opening, yet they say the same closing all the time. That's because it's a good closing. All a good closing. Time. Omar, we're going to let you say goodbye. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you for everything. I hope Thanks you guys go about and uh, go to the website and look at what your local brick and mortar is. Support them and... Uh, I will see you guys very soon, so thank you for everything. Christmas is coming soon. Christmas. We thank you very much for your support and your patronage, and we hope you'll join us next week when we'll have...